Perhaps this is the perfect time to begin something new. As cycles come to their own completion, the garden is coming to a close. The last bits and pieces are asking to be plucked from the earth. The kale is growing slowly, still delicious and tender. The carrots have reached their peak sweetness, having just experienced their first deep frost of the season. This year I am choosing to pull my carrots from the ground before it gets too cold, just to avoid any potential mushiness like I experienced last year with some of my carrots that I left in further into the winter. Uh, I have decided to harvest them all and probably eat them pretty quickly because they are quite delicious and there really isn't anything quite like a carrot straight from the earth grown from seed, nourished for months. I believe these carrots were planted way back in May or June. They are definitely a lesson in patience. I almost gave up on them a few times over the summer as they just didn't seem to be doing much at all and only some of the seeds that I had planted decided to sprout which in the end was a good thing as the ones that did germinate grew to a lovely size as you can see here. In preparation for this long winter that is imminently approaching, it is always important to become well stocked with kindling and thankfully it's an activity that I really enjoy. I find it so satisfying to watch the piles of kindling um, grow and grow as just slowly chop away and yeah it's such a great feeling to know that there will be a ready-made fire starter throughout the winter. This year I am choosing to prepare a little bit more than I did last year, as I do recall midwinter getting very low on kindling and having to do a little bit of emergency uh, chopping and splitting uh, to keep me going throughout the winter.
when I say emergency, I am exaggerating. It was definitely not an emergency, but um, like I said, it's always nice to have a ready-made on hand kindling that's dry and ready to light a fire. If you don't enjoy chopping kindling as much as I do, or even watching it, I suggest that you skip ahead a little bit. Um, but if you do enjoy it, then just keep watching. I love the sound of the wood falling into the wood pile and uh, the sound of the hatchet hitting the wood. I love all of it and uh, perhaps you do too. If so, enjoy. Not long after finishing up that batch of kindling, we had our first very light snowfall. So it felt like the timing was perfect to be doing that task of preparing for a warm winter. The snow quickly turned to rain and it felt like a great time to come inside and get a little bit cozy. Tune into my inner hermit, embrace my inner unicorn, and sit by the warm fire. There is a part of my life story that is asking to be remembered, to come to the forefront, 
and that story has to do with creating more specific spaces for the nurturance of feminine energy, for tapping into the wisdom of what it means to be rooted in the earth and be rooted in the energies of nurturance, of groundedness, and the energies that speak to what it means to be deeply in tune with inner rhythms, the cycles of the moon, and the reciprocal energy that we exchange deeply with the earth. This story that I speak of also has a lot to do with slowing down, becoming more present, becoming more aware, indulging in playfulness and beauty, the richness of life, the simple joys, and the pleasure of what it means to be deeply connected to our own bodies, or shall I say, deeply connected to my own body as I experience this life here on Earth. As autumn reaches its fullness and the leaves have fallen from the trees, as I have previously mentioned, it is getting cooler. We had that first small snowfall, so I am taking full advantage of my seasonal outdoor shower, enjoying the last few days that I will be able to use it before my water pipes have to be emptied for the winter um, as I have yet to bury my pipes that lead from my spring to my cabin. And this is me indulging in some playful mirror work. Uh, it is a practice that I enjoy doing, um, just really learning to admire myself on a physical level and look deep into my own eyes as much as I can to see the depths of my own being. I find it is joyful, playful, and yes, somewhat indulgent, but a great activity. I highly recommend.
I also love to admire the natural world around me. Everything from the fallen leaves on the ground to the babbling streams that surround me. I just find so much beauty in the simple things in life, which are also a major inspiration for all of my creativity and art making. And here I will show you a little snippet of a project I'm working on right now. That is a wall hanging called Deeply Rooted Layers of Depth. And it is helping me connect to my own uh, root energy center and, uh, and the energies of the earth and remembering to connect with my, my body and just exploring the relationship between my body and the body of the earth, which is an ongoing practice of mine, one that in this moment is deeply influencing the art that I create. One of my other passions in life is creating healthy, nourishing, and delicious food. And so here I'm going to take you on a little journey of creating a warm miso ramen soup from scratch. Um, if you're into this kind of thing, please continue watching. If watching someone prepare and cook food is not your idea of fun, feel free to skip forward for the next little bit uh, until we get to our next section. I am a bit of a intuitive when it comes in, when it comes to working in the kitchen and I sometimes will use recipes but often I will just go with what feels right and it very rarely leads me astray. The garlic that I just chopped up is from a woman fairly local who grew it and it is amazingly delicious. And the onions are from my own garden. Some of them didn't grow very big so I'm using those up uh, sooner than later. And 
the carrots that I'll be using are also from the garden. The ginger that I am now chopping up is from a store as well as the cabbage that is going into here. So I like to try to use as much as possible from my own garden and then supplement from uh, different stores and other farmers or wherever I can get some good healthy um, fresh food from.
This special ingredient that I'm adding right now is some fur tip vinegar that I made last year that is so delicious, so potent, and just adds so much depth to any dish, but particularly love it uh, with dishes that have mushrooms in it, as the mushrooms tend to absorb all of the flavor and yeah, just give it, um, give the dish a very dynamic taste experience. And I'm just finishing it all off with a crinkle and sprinkle of dried dill from the garden. I hope you have enjoyed this little glimpse into my life as an off-grid artist and a few of my witchy ways that I will be further exploring and sharing as time goes on. I feel this is going to be a very fun and explorative journey of creating these videos and sharing stories. It's a way that I can incorporate my love of photography, my love of writing, and my desire to become a better storyteller uh, into my everyday life. So I appreciate those of you who are here uh, coming along for the ride. I encourage you, if you have enjoyed any part of this video, to stick around. Um, perhaps subscribe to the channel if you have not yet already. 
and share this channel or share this video with anyone you feel might be inspired by what I'm sharing and what I plan on sharing, which will, of course, only be discovered as time goes on. For now, I am going to be just enjoying this transition through the seasons as fall continues to turn to winter and the world around me changes just as the world inside of me changes. I would love it and be highly appreciative if you choose to leave a comment uh, letting me know what you enjoyed about this video, what you'd like to see more of, and anything else that you'd like to share from your heart to mine, I will receive it. I, like I said, I am just really grateful that you have watched this, whether you chose to skip through some parts or enjoy the whole video in its full length. I'm just glad that you're here and that I have someone to share these stories with. So thank you so much. This first video is dedicated to my dear friend who has passed into the spirit world, Nancy, who has made this making of this video possible through her generous spirit. She continues to remind me to follow my heart and share goodness with the world.